God is so good. We're going to do something different at this moment. I would like, let's see here. Turn your mic on, I hear you better. Check this out. Yeah. There we go. There it works. I'm going to ask two awesome people to step up this way. Now that means everybody's going to start coming up. <laughs> <laughs> two awesome people. I want Dudley and Linda to come up here. Bring $20 a piece. <laughs> <laughs> Stand back here with your back and and face us. Two awesome people. Absolutely awesome people. Love them dearly. And when I holler three, somebody pull the trap door. <laughs> After much prayer and deliberation and definitely not taking lightly, the board of myself wanted to ask you, would you consider the opportunity to serve this body of believers in the server of demons? I have read before the biblical qualifications as prescribed in 1 Timothy uh, uh, 3, 7 to 13. You realize that this is a sacred duty never to be taken lightly or haphazardly. Do you agree with and adhere to that scripture? Are you willing to devote your time and effort prayerfully and ser seriously to the ministry of the office of deacon? Yes. Are you willing to support this body with your time, talent, and resources as God prospers you, therefore setting a godly example before this body and to those around you not connected with the body? Yes. Your example of stewardship should be noticed in and out of this body. Are you willing to work in harmony with the other members of the board and the body, protecting it from discord and confusion? Are you willing to do your best to see this body grow in number and harmony with each other and with the Lord? Is there any member here who knows any reason that these standing before you might not be allowed to become part of this ministry of service in the office of deacon? Do all the members of the body promise to do all to assist these new deacons as well as the existing ones in the ministry of service? Amen. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we bring these people to you today. We ask you to place your anointing upon them, assist them in a new journey. Give them Holy Ghost wisdom, strength, and abundant joy. We thank you for their willingness to serve you, God, and their humbleness, Lord, to do whatever you would have them to do. And I thank you, God, that whenever I ask them to do anything, they're more than joyfully ready to do it. And I thank you so much for that. In the name of Jesus, place that firm anointing upon them. And we thank you for them dearly in the name of Jesus we pray. Church said? Amen. All right. Let me be the first to give you the right hand of fellowship as you embark on a new journey of servanthood. And may God anoint and bless your efforts as we work together. Feel free to call upon your pastor at any time. Steve, won't you come here? There you go. He's our, he's our deacon chair. We're going to officially welcome you in. You're looking good. Everybody else come on up here and give the right hand of fellowship. Come on up here, y'all. Everybody else come on up here. We're talking about Sunday. Ain't got to go. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. The Lord just, I felt like he was striking me. Oh, by the way, I got y'all to pray for me because I thought I didn't know what was going to happen happen last week when that instructor just dropped that bomb on me. But praise God, I made a B plus in the class, so praise God. Amen. That's right. One A and B plus on top of that. Okay. That's like an A minus. That, yeah, that, that's right. That's an A minus looking like a B. <laughs> yeah. And, and, but I got to tell you, this last two semesters, this, this, that semester, and the semester starting Monday, I'm going to be taken from Harvard. <laughs> I'm going to be taking it from Harvard. My instructor's name is Ron Harvard. <laughs> You're going to be Yale. You're going to be Yale. I'm going to be Yale. 
Amen. That's right. Get your Bibles out. I was going to say this. I don't know if it's because of this last semester, because after this semester, I will be through. Praise God. I have my degree from Lee. Praise God. But I was going to say this, though, uh, the Lord just has been dealing with me about struggle. You know, uh, what, what I see in this church is I see this church as a as a caterpillar that is already spun the cocoon and is trying to dig out of the cocoon to become a wonderful butterfly. And we're tempted, we're tempted so much to cut the cocoon instead of struggle through it. Uh, how many have heard that about the cocoon of the, the butterfly? You know, uh, just real quick, little boy, little boy caught some caterpillars. He saw them both being cocoons. He saw one trying to break out a cocoon, so he took his Barlow knife and he cut the cocoon open. And the butterfly fell to the ground, crawled around a little while, and died. So the next one he left alone and left it go through its struggle. And as it was going through its struggle, when it came out, it opened up its wings and it dried its wings and it flew off as a beautiful butterfly. The difference is the struggle causes juices and, and uh, fluids to flow from the, from the sea. Because while it's in this cocoon, it totally metamorphoses and metamorphosizes. It totally turns to jelly and it goes from being a caterpillar to being a butterfly, but, but it's still not ready to fly because all of the stuff has not been really, really fixed in order for it to fly. And so the, while, while it is struggling to get out of that cocoon, uh, fluids are flowing from the caterpillar, from the now the, the butterfly's body to its wings. The wings are strengthened by the struggle. The fluid flows, it can flow no other way. And so when it comes out of this cocoon, after this tremendous struggle, it seems so painful, when it comes out, once the wings dry, it can fly. Some of us in here right now, you're in this struggle, you're wondering why somebody don't just come and cut it. Some of you are trying to cut it yourself and don't realize the more you cut it, the worse shape you're going to be in. You've got to let the process take place. Our church is in this cocoon right now. We can't cut the cocoon. We have to... to let our wings expand. As our wings start expanding, then we will break out of the cocoon and something beautiful is coming. Amen. I believe it with all my heart. How many believe that? Amen. 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 Look at somebody and say, you're getting ready to turn from a little worm to a, or from a caterpillar to a butterfly. Tell them. You're changing from a caterpillar to a butterfly. Amen. Amen. So, so, so here we go. Get your Bible out. We're talking about struggle. And again, this started last week, and, and it, like I said, it was the introduction. That was part one of the introduction. Here's part two of the introduction. God is so good. You know, I was reading, I remember, I remember D.C. and Daniel, when they were little, they wanted a pet hamster. I thought about it today because I think it was one of D.C.'s birthday presents. He wanted a pet hamster. I said, son, if we get you a pet hamster, we're going to wind up taking care of it. Then she said, no, Dad, not this time. I said, yes, we are. We're going to take care of it. I said, no, Dad, I'll let you down all these other times. I said, you had to take care of it. This time I'm going to take care of the hamster. I said, and then his mom said, do you promise to take care of this hamster? And so he said, he said yes, ma'am. And, of course, it ended up being me and his mom taking care of the hamster. One well, evening, exasperated, his mom said, how many times do you think that hamster would have died if I hadn't looked after it? He thought for a minute and said, once. <laughs> just once hey amen it's not going to be anymore no pain no gain dealing with your life struggles we're just going <clears> to <throat> uh, pick up a few things from last week and then we're going to go right into to the rest of the message but get your bible out turn to numbers numbers is a good book numbers chapter 13 stand for the reading of the word numbers chapter 13 Thank y'all for the gift of the uh, cards, uh, Pastor Appreciation Day. Uh, it, is, it is an honor to be your pastor, and, and I thank y'all for putting up with me the last four years trying to get to this degree. So that's, pretty, that's been uh, a relief to finally get to that thing. Amen. And y'all were a big help in all kinds of ways. Y'all were a big help, and I thank you so much. Numbers 13, verse 23. And they came into the brook of Eshcol and cut down from thence a branch of one of the clusters of grapes, and they bare it between two upon a staff, and they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. And the place 
was called the Brook of Eskil because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after forty days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel to the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and went into all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they said, We came into the land where thou sentest us and surely it floweth of milk and honey and this is the fruit of it. This is the proof of this. Look at how awesome it is. And every time I come to you and start telling you something and talking about how awesome it is and then they say, But... That's what nevertheless means, but. When somebody comes up to you and says, all this stuff is good, but, get ready. <laughs> Amen, because they get ready to throw some negative on you. The people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are wild and very great, and moreover we saw the children of Anak there. And the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites and the Termites dwell by the sea. <laughs> See if y'all listening. Yeah. And by the coast of Jordan, and Caleb stealed the people. In other words, y'all calm down. Just because they put that butt in there, now the people have gone crazy. They're having a hard time with all this. He calmed the people down before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, But we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched and to the children of Israel, saying, The land which thou, that we have gone to search is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it were men of great stature. And then we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which came of the giants, and we were in our own sight. Y'all say own sight. Y'all say mirror. mirror. We were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so were we in their sight. Y'all say window. Let me tell you something. People see you through the window when they go shopping. They look in the window to see what's there. And if you think you're, a, you're, you're weak and puny and minor and small, guess what they're going to see? Weak and puny and minor and small. Let's pray. Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace and mercy. I thank you, God, for all you do for us, God. And there's absolutely nothing, nothing that you cannot do. God, this thing is yours. It's in your hands. We trust you totally. I thank you, God, for all the things you've done for us, all the things you've said to us, all the promises you have made, and all the promises you have kept. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We thank you for all of it. Help us today, God, Lord, just to reach up to you and get, get a fresh, capture a fresh, new anointing, and a fresh, new hope, and a fresh, new vision. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And church said, Amen. Amen. way down and shake somebody's hand and say, if you're not here after what I'm here after, you'll be here after I'm gone. Tell them. You got all that, right? Yeah. <laughs> no pain, no gain. Every time I see this, I'm not going to go into the store, but every time I see this, I remember being a football coach and watching my boys get zapped hard by being double teamed and triple teamed and I would go down and just and just grab them and pull them back up and grab them by their shoulder pads sometimes and pull them back up and see tears in their eyes and I say, fellas, wipe it up, wipe it off, tighten up buttercup, let's go. But inside I was going, y'all know y'all just hit my son. You do it again, I'm coming after you myself. But no, I didn't because I knew if I did that, they would have never have been able to take on what they needed to take on. Amen? And there's times where God's looking down on us. And I know that, that in the Father's sense of Him, <clears throat> the loving part of Him, He wants to reach down and just, and just hold you, which He will do that, but He doesn't necessarily stop the opposition. Sometimes He will increase it. Amen? So here we go. This is just a, a few of, of, of the gifts back up where we were last week. The Christian life itself is definitely, uh, it requires us to walk by faith, not by sight. You can't go by what you see because you will get so aggravated. We have to move beyond our feelings. We have to move beyond our limitations. We must prepare for battle every day of our life. There's major events and stuff we expect. And then there's the everyday struggles. Things that you do not expect. And so, so yeah, I was thinking about we were going to make a trip. We went to Tennessee uh, uh, this week. 
Uh, uh, of course, uh, my wife tried to get me to go during the time I was graduating, and I said, no, I don't want to go in December. It'll be crazy there, and I don't want to have any part of that. But we'll go now between this, th these breaks, between the semesters. And I took her to see her brother's grave, because uh, he just died of cancer, too. We did his funeral here, but we had never, his body was still in Tennessee, so we went to the graveyard there and saw him. But I remember we were going to make a trip. It was two miles. Two miles. And they told us it was called Sevierville, Tennessee, right by Pigeon Ford. And two miles. And so we called up Garmin, and Garmin said, 20 minutes. 20 minutes for two miles? Garmin was wrong. It was 40 minutes. To go two miles. We missed, almost missed our appointment because of that. So that's the unexpected. I was thinking two miles is two miles. Two miles is not two North Carolina possum track miles. Amen. There two miles is like going all the way through Greenville and going through, going back to Greenville the other time just to go two miles. It was unexpected, you know, an unexpected struggle. And the people were driving like they were from North Carolina. Wow. So, so here we go. <clears throat> when we choose to walk by faith, Here's what's going to happen. Every time you choose to walk by faith, you're going to be met with resistance. Remember, a plane does not take off with the wind. A plane takes off against the wind. Every time you decide, God, I'm here and I'm going to walk and I'm going to be yours and you can trust me, I'm going to do it. Here comes the struggle that we have to face. Amen? And remember this, without struggle, our faith is absolutely hindered. You see, uh, we don't want to experience struggle, but you know what? We can't walk without it. The airplane wasn't want to experience trouble, but you know what? Without it, it can not work. Up until the Wright brothers, they were trying to fly with the wind. Orwell and Wilbur decided that, you know what? That's not the way this has to work. And they did it the other way. They went against the wind. And it's amazing what happened when they did it. So watch, watch. Faith in our struggle is weak. It is puny, it is ineffective, and it's nothing but wishful thinking. Matter of fact, you don't need faith if you're going to live this way. All you need is some fairy dust to sprinkle out. Amen? Without struggle, there is no progress. I have hated some of the struggles I have been in in my life. They hurt me, they hurt my family, they hurt my friends, but the struggles in the end wind up being one of some of the biggest blessings that I ever had in my life. So, so here's the struggle principle. When God gives us, and here's we're getting ready to go into to the new stuff now. I'm getting ready to finish up from last week. When God gives us a promise, he also gives us a problem. And promise produce struggle. So what Abraham is going to be the father of a mighty nation. Your seed's going to be unlimited like the sands of the sea. And he couldn't have a baby and his wife was buried. David, I'll make you king. And David couldn't even seem to, first off, couldn't get out of the, the sheep. The, the, the sheep field, and then when he did go to be with Saul, he was his whole life was nothing but being hunted like a common animal. But here's the cool thing: remember this. If you don't think of anything else, remember anything. Remember this: faith causes us to grasp the promise, but problems cause the promise to grab back. Faith causes us to grab it, but the problem causes it to grab back. And so, so, so the thing about this, and we're getting ready to go right into the new stuff. Has God given you a promise? Has He? What are you facing now? God's given you a promise, and now you're facing loss. Now you're facing hurt. Now you're facing health problems. But here's what you got to remember. Without struggle, y'all say it, without struggle, there is no progress. And here's where we were at last week, and this was the whole sermon last week. Went, went on and on and on, and we got one slide today, not ten. <laughs> Ready? Struggle... When you're going through something, it's a sign that there's still life in you. That you still have potential. You know, I had a man one time trying to sell me a dead mule. I said, why do I want the dead mule? He said, well, it won't be hard to, to feed. It won't be hard to house. I said, no, it's dead. God knows when struggles come in our way. He allows it to come our way. For us to know there's still life in us. Through 2 Corinthians 4, 8-10, we 
We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about and abiding the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. Number one, when you're struggling, that means life is still in you. It's not over. Somebody say, whoo! Thank God, I thought it was over. I'm glad you told me that, Pastor. Now I know it's not over. Somebody said to somebody, it's not over. All right. Number two, struggle is a sign that Satan does not have you yet. Woo! Somebody go, woo! It is a sign that give him more hand clap of praise. Satan ain't got me yet. He's still trying. Some of y'all should be rejoicing right now. Boy, I've had, boy, I can't believe how it just keeps coming and coming and coming on me. But it's a sign that Satan ain't got you yet. He ain't got you. Not just don't have you. He ain't got you yet. Amen. Hey, y'all go ahead and talk to us a possum track call. He ain't got me yet. He ain't got me yet. That's right. <clears throat> Amen. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there's no temptation that has taken you. That is what, what, what is common to man. The word temptation, get ready, some of y'all, man, you ain't going to like this. This don't always come from Satan. Although he's usually involved in it, it doesn't come from him. He's not the author of a lot of our temptations when it comes to this kind of temptation. This word temptation here means literally to put to proof. Wow. To put to proof. So that tells me, oh yeah, sometimes Satan's definitely the author of a lot of trials we go through, but when this specific thing right here, when you're going through it, God's got a plan. He not, might not have uh, I just popped up and done it. Satan can be coming. You can be allowing it. Whatever. There's all kinds of mechanics in all this temptation. Sometimes we bring it on ourselves. Sometimes we, someone else brings it on for us. There's all kinds of stuff. But in all of it, God uses this to prove us. Are we going to stand up? Are we going to keep on going? Are we going to follow the temptation? Quit? That word taken means literally no temptation has taken you, which is common to man, such as common to man. That word taken means literally to take you by surprise. You weren't expecting. How many has had been proven and you weren't even expecting it to come? It didn't happen like you thought. I thought it was going to go this way, but it went this way. I thought this was going to happen and this happened. I thought everything was clear, but Satan hit me off at the pass. I used to love that when I was a little boy watching Roy Rogers, Gene Autry. Hit him off at the pass, boys. Well, you know what? Then I found out that's one of Satan's favorite words, too. Hit him off at the pass, boys. I think they got it straight, and they're going good, and everything's good. Let's get them, hit them below the belt when they're not even expecting to be hit. Wow. So, so here it is. There's no temptation when it comes this way. It's there to put you to proof that we got it. <coughs> but also, has not just taken you by surprise. It's not common to every person that's fighting this. We're all fighting this. Look at somebody and say, look at somebody and say, you ain't that special. I love that. Tell somebody else. Don't you get fun? Ain't that fun? Tell somebody else. You ain't that special. You know, sometimes we get going through things and thinking that, that the devil's just picked us out and we're the only ones he's going to fight. Everybody else has got it good. No. Everybody, every last one of us. In some way or another. So, so there comes a time when, you, when, when your faith being put to proof, when you're being absolutely everything you stand on and trust in is being pulled out from under your feet. And during this time, taken by surprise, number one, you've got to realize it's happening to everybody, just in different ways. And number two, look at this, I love this, this is the hinge to the whole promise. 
but God is faithful. Wow. You're taken by surprise. Your faith is being put to the test. You're even wondering, is it even worth serving him because of all this? And then you begin to think, you know what, everybody else has got it going good. No, everybody's going through these things. God is faithful. God is watching. That word faithful means literally, in all of this, he keeps his word. You go, I don't feel like it. I've said that before. Well, God, this is your keeping your word. Good Lord, how about... Do something without keeping it. Good Lord, this is tough, Lord. God is faithful. He will not suffer you. And there's two words there. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able. And there's two words there. Number one, suffer you means literally to allow circumstances to come your way. But it also means to leave you helpless. So he will allow circumstances to come your way, but he will not leave you helpless. Things are coming. They're going to take you by surprise. It's going to try your absolute faith. But he says, I'm faithful. I'm going to keep my word. But the temptation also will make a way to escape. That sounds like he's taking you out of it, don't he? Just when you think you got it figured out, well, God's going to get me out of this. He could just take it off my back. No. <laughs> Sometimes he does. Makes a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. What it means is, sometimes you go over the mountain. I saw all the mountains moving over. There were some that had tunnels in them. There were some that moved out of the way. Rocks were on both sides where they had cut through. So some of the places we were driving through, the mountain was moved. Some of the other places we were walking through, the mountain was borne through. Other times we went over the mountain in our own life. Sometimes we got to move the mountain out of our way. Sometimes we have to go through the mountain. Sometimes we go over it. Either way, that word bear means to bear up under the load. So, so God, in his infinite mercy and grace, he knows what we need, he knows how to give us what we need, but the way he does it is, he lets it come upon us. Now the Red Sea, he said, well, that's pretty rough. He had him at the Red Sea. There was mountains on each side. Pharaoh's finest army behind him. There was nothing but a Red Sea in front of him. And, 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 and is this the best you got? Well, the freedom before it, it said God could have took him around the mountain, but that would have meant they had to fight. And they weren't ready for the fight. Oh, come on, y'all. They weren't ready for the fight, so they put him in the Red Sea. They couldn't go anywhere. I'm not ready for the fight. So you leave it to a place where I can't go anywhere. <laughs> Have you ever felt like that? It says, see, God's taking them and God's, God is, he knows they're not going to fight because they don't have that warrior spirit yet. They still got that slave mentality. So in order to break through that slave mentality, they need to see something big. I mean big. And so Moses, you can read it. Moses says, what we're going to do now, Lord, is like, and the Lord looks back at him, and it's in Exodus 14. He goes, he goes, he goes what are we going to do now, Lord? And he says, why are you talking to me? Really? Red Sea, mountains, army. God said, I told you to go over or through the Red Sea. But look at what's in front of me. God is faithful. He said, take up the rod. And you hold it up and you watch what I'll do. And God parted the waters and they walked through. So, so watch this. Struggle is a sign that Satan does not have you yet. It is some cool stuff. Hold on, we got some more going here. Turn to the book of Ezekiel. We get we go to the next one. If you're looking in the New Testament for Ezekiel, you've gone too far. If you got a Bible like mine. I 
See what page it is on my Bible. Ezekiel 37. Here we go. Ezekiel 37. Does anybody ever go through trials and you just feel like you're dried up? Done? You're a prune? Ezekiel's looking out at a time when God's people, it looked like it was over for them. They've been through trials, they've been through tribulation, things were rough. They didn't know if they were ever going to even be able to do anything again for God. It looked like all the wind was taken out of their sail. It looked like everything they had planned on doing had stopped. They no longer could be those that would deliver the Christ child. There was no way they could do what God had planned for them because of all the struggles and the captivities and all of this. And then God, God says, so God talks to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1. And the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley that was full of dry bones. Y'all say full. That means literally in the Hebrew construction, that means everywhere you looked, there was a lot of dry bones. Amen. And it caused me to pass them round about, and behold, there were many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. So there was very many, and they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said to me, prophesy these bones, and say to them, O oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. Some of y'all need to be hearing this right now. Some of y'all feel dried up. You feel scattered. You feel like it's over. And today, right now, God wants to breathe in you something you haven't felt in quite some time. But in order for this to happen, you got to do this. Because it's here. But if you do this, guess what? You're going to walk away dry. you got to sometimes just let go and breathe it in. Thus said the Lord, saying these bones, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will send you upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as it was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together bone to his bone and when I beheld lo the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them above and there was no, and there was no breath in them then I said unto me prophesied unto the wind Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the fourth winds, and breathe, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as commanded, and the breath came unto them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Wow. Then I said unto the son of man, These bones are a whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried, our hope is lost, we are cut off from our parts. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and I will cause you to come out of your graves, and I will bring you to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord, and when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, you shall live. Come on now. When I put my spirit in you, you shall live, and I will place you in your own land, and then you shall know that I am the Lord that spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. You know what? In here, some of y'all right now need to start breathing it in. Come on, breathe it in. Breathe it in. God, look, the devil's told you that it was over with, that God has no more need of you. God still needs you. Struggle is the proof of it. God still needs you. Breathe it in, church. Come on, breathe it in. Breathe it in and thank him. Breathe it in and thank him. God's got this. Yes, Lord. Come on. Yes. Oh, come on. Thank <laughs> you.
read it. <laughs> Amen. Number four. Struggle is a sign that God is defending you. Power. Zechariah 4 and 6. I love this. Zechariah 4 and 6 says, And he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. That word might literally means combined strength, a mighty army. And that word power is talking about personal strength. He says there's going to come a time when you just don't have the strength. There's going to come a time when you get all your friends together and they don't have the strength. But when it's those times when you're feeling like it's all over, that you've about had it, that's about done, it's over with, praise God. God says, it's not by what you got, it's by what I got. Amen? Amen. When, she, when God looks down on us and he sees us going through our struggles, not only does he see us going through our struggles, but there's the Holy Ghost out here with us. There's surely a goodness and mercy following us. There's Jesus leading the way. And he sees all that in front of us. He well, why am I going through so much? Struggle is there to promote you. Without a struggle, it would be an empty victory. You know, I was looking the other day, and I was trying to look at a, a self-paced <laughs> master's degree. Self-paced means I ain't got to be stuck under the thumb of Lee University going... Read these papers today, read this tomorrow, 100 pages today, blah, 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 all these tests, 25 pages, no, no, no. I walk and do it at my own pace. I actually found, I kid you not, I found a company that for like $2,500 will send you all the papers that say you took all the courses and they give you a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and a doctor's degree. It was UNC was one of them. I'm playing. I just did that for Stephen. And I looked and I said, you mean you can actually get these transcripts that said I took all these courses for $2,500? I said I would never do that in a million years, but I just couldn't believe there's people out there. I wonder, who's working on me? that has his transcripts he paid $2,500 for. Mm -hmm. You know, and, 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 and I got my life coaching and, and a board certified medical counselor and getting me to have board certified pastoral counselor and every last one of them requires like 300 hours, uh, 1,000 hours and, and it's just work, 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 got to be supervised, people got to pay and then other people pay $25 and two box tops and they get it. I don't want one of them. But sometimes we want to do the same thing with God. Let me give you $25 or two box tops, God. You know, you used to when you said you were ordained, it meant something. And now they won't even take your ordination as proof anymore. They got to see your they got to see your credentials and see what you've been through and all kinds of training. Because you used to in the Church of God, I, I, I'm an ordained bishop in the Church of God. And I had to be 30 years old, and I had to have five years <clears throat> active ministry experience. I had to have at least an associate's degree. I had to go through an eight-month internship program, and I had to apply for ordination. And just hope they were going to look through and see that, that, I, that the powers of me saw that I had enough training and enough stuff to be ordained. And one of my friends went online, and in 10 minutes was ordained. Not the church of God. Not the church of God. No, 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 no. And I begin to think about that. God, please don't ever let me come to the point where I don't want to stay in the struggle. I just want to sit by the sidelines and have it give to me. God, let me do it. Give me the strength. When I don't have the strength, my friends don't have the strength around me, help me depend on your spirit. You know, the Bible says, says, but we have this treasure, uh, or, or, earth, we have this treasure, or this storehouse of what God's got for us, this storehouse, we have this treasure in earthen vessels, many clay, that the excellency of the power may be of God 
and not of us. That excellency of power means an exceeding force. I'm going to go through. I told you that a while ago. Y'all struggle just a little bit more. Struggle with me. Number five, it means breakthroughs on the way. That's the promise. Y'all say, I got a promise. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. I'm hurrying. Kind of. Let me just part right here for a minute. Many. Abundant. Increasing. Afflictions. Your stress. Struggles. Grief. Of the righteous. God's children. But the Lord, the self-existent one, our Father, Delivers us. He defends, delivers, escapes. Without fail, he will pluck, preserve, recover us. And I realize that word deliver. Because it means I love it. Without fail. Notice this. The promise is the same. Every time you get in struggle, the method is different. Sometimes God steps up in front. Sometimes he pulls you out. Sometimes he pulls you through. Remember, I, I, I didn't know all this was going to happen with Bethany. And all this struggle. The struggle before the cancer. And then the struggle with the cancer. And the struggle after cancer. But I do remember... At the same time we dedicated Bethany, the same exact time we dedicated Bethany, a lady walked up to me in church and she said, God woke me up and told me something. Now, I trusted this lady. She was so awesome. Matter of fact, I'd never seen her do anything for herself. I was always trying to help somebody else. Never selfishly motivated in what she said. And she wrote it down. She said, I can't even tell you this. I had I woke up from sleep. God spoke this. I sat by my bedside. I wrote it down. You could tell that she must have been a half asleep or didn't have her glasses on. It looked like my right. <laughs> yeah. And it was about that long. And the gist of it said, you're getting ready to face journey. And this journey is to be one of great struggle. I said, but God said to tell you, man of God, that I trust you and I've put you in this position. Stay strong. And when you feel like you can't go one more step, know that I'll be there. And I've never had to sit before or after I'll be there to pull you through. Not push me through, pull me through. There's a difference. Push, I'm still going. Push, I'm still going. It's just give me the engine. But to pull me through means I might be down on my knees by now. Can't even move. And he says, oh, he'll grab his hand, grab him by the hand. When you can't take another step, and he will pull you through. And know this, man of God, the Father said he will never fail you. Wow. I kept that for years. I didn't even understand it. To start with, and now I very much understand it. It's very clear. Some of y'all in here right now, the struggle is so powerful in you. And you're wondering, am I even going to make it? The results are the same. No matter who pulls you through, steps up, gets in front of you, pulls you out, pulls you through. And all these things, Romans 8 has a bunch of bad stuff. And all these things, we are more than conquerors. More than conquerors. How many were in Holyfield beat Mike Tyson? You remember that? That was awesome. Absolutely awesome. Holyfield.
strange. They went into the, 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 the cameras went in before the fight, and they went into Mike Tyson's room where they were doing some kind of stuff. And they were like, you the man, you the man, you the man, you can beat him, blah, 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 blah. They went into Holyfield's room, and when the cameras turned on, he was on his feet with his hands raised and praise and worship was being played. And he was just saying, glory to God. Glory to God, I give this all to you, Lord. It's all yours. He goes in there and he stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Nobody ever done that. He took him down. He trained for six months. He put on about 20 pounds and took off at the same time because he had to get in the right, right way. He fights against the strongest undefeated champion in the world. During this fight, he lost 20 pounds. Between the sweat and the stuff that was going on, he was awarded the belt and whatever it was, whatever, maybe 75 million, I can't remember what it was. I just say 75 million dollars. So he is a conqueror. God said we're more than a conqueror. So how can we be anything like Holyfield? We're more than a conqueror. I'm going to tell you who more than a conqueror was. When he went home, his wife, who had not, had not trained for six months, had put on a lost weight, didn't lose 20 pounds, <laughs> weren't beat in some places he'd never been beat before, <laughs> didn't have that belt. She goes, okay, son, hand it here. And he hands Miss Holyfield a check for $75 million. Holyfield was the conqueror. Mrs. Holyfield was more than a conqueror. No matter how bad you feel beat up, no matter how bad you feel things are, no matter how, how bad you feel defeated, there was one to do before you and took more than you were ever imagined. And he went in that garden and bled sweat. Y'all guys, come on up here. Sweat, blood, the capillaries to his body because of the extreme stress, the capillaries were breaking, bursting, and he was sweating blood. <clears throat> on the cross, his father had forsaken, stripped naked up on the cross, beat beyond recognition. And then he says, my God, my God, why is I forsaken, man? I feel like you're not even watching me. He wasn't. God had turned his back. There's one that knows what it feels like to have struggle. Taken down lifeless off that cross, but on the third day, something amazing happened. He's the conqueror. And because of what he did, we live in that, and we're more than a conqueror. Everybody stand. Y'all say this to me. Look at it. Thank you, Lord, for my struggles. For without them, I would have never known my strength. Say that with me again. Thank you, Lord, for my struggles. For without them, I would have never known my strengths. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Early on. No temptation taking you but such as common to man. There's not a time on this earth that your faith, whenever it comes to being tested, even see if it's worth standing on. And you're taken by surprise. So you can't be prepared for it. You have to remember that God is faithful. He'll take care of you. With every eye closed, every head bowed, nobody looking around, 
your greatest act of faith sometimes and the hardest thing you may have to do is what I'm going to ask you right now. But I promise you, you'll feel relief after you do this. struggled as much as they absolutely could struggle and at this moment you feel like you're about to crash under the load and Satan keeps telling you where's your God now I'm here to tell you he's here God is the Father God is faithful. God is faithful. With every head bowed, every eye closed. Here's what I'm going to talk about. Here's the hard one. If you're here today in that struggle that you're going through, you don't see any breaks anytime soon. Or maybe you find you're getting ready to fall under the load. And nobody's looking around. We just stick that hand up quick and say, pray for me, Pastor. This is getting tough. I, I don't even know anymore. This is really, really tough. And I need some help. I need some help. I need to know that God's got this. I need to feel him again. I need to know that God's got me. Maybe you're here and you don't feel like you're being crushed into the load, but you just wish it Lighten up some because that struggle really is wearing you down and you just need some relief. When nobody's looking around, every eye closed, we just lift that hand up. I just need some relief. I just need some relief. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I want everybody right now to repeat after me. Father, you see the struggle. You know what I'm going through. Your son has felt what I'm going through. And your son said he would never leave me or forsake me. He would never physically or emotionally leave me to do this by myself. Lord, I just need to feel it right now. That strength, that encouragement that only comes from you. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by your spirit. And I'm reaching up for you right now. Put your hands up. Everybody put your hands up. I reach to you right now, God, in this struggle. And I know, God, at this moment, I may feel like a worm. I may feel low as that caterpillar. But soon the cocoon is going to break over, break open. And when it breaks open, I'm going to be a butterfly. Y'all say that, I'm going to be a butterfly. And I thank you, God, that you didn't cut the cocoon open. But you let struggle build my wings. And I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You may be here right now and you need something. You need to talk to God. The altars are open. You can talk to God. You can, can pray. You can just come up and just spend some time with Him. The altars are open. They're always open. Anytime, anytime, but especially right now, if you need to spend some time with God, we'll be here with you. Somebody say, God's got me. Amen. Amen. I was talking to somebody one day, and they were really hurt. <clears throat> and I was wearing not this one, I got two braces. One brace is actually for cancer patients. Because on one side it says God's got this, and on the other side it says either way I win. 
And I said to this person that was going through this struggle, I said, as Bethany said all the time, God's got this. And the person immediately said, yeah, but she died. And so I turned it over and said, but she said, don't worry about me dying, man, because either way, I win. Don't tell God how to fix it. Just thank you for fixing it. God doesn't need my instruction. God needs my faith. God will give me hope, and I just trust him. Thank you, Lord, because you're going to work this thing out. I know you will. Tuesday night, somebody said, are we about finishing up with this? Well, I could finish up with it this week if I wanted to, but it's so good I don't want to. And we're doing it through the senses about this uh, live now, live strong. Let's do the senses. I'm not sure what sense, which one of the senses we're going to go through. Just know that I'm picking out senses we can all have. In some sense, some of us want to have. Be nice. <laughs> Nonsense. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's good. Nonsense. Amen. Okay. We're going to put the Mary Hart does good like a medicine. Nonsense. Amen. Everybody happy? Amen. Don't forget, y'all tell people, uh, uh, those people that might can remember Ed Pollock. Uh, y'all call him Cecil B. the Mill at the plant. He's going to be here for homecoming. And he's awesome. He's absolutely awesome, and and you know you know if if I just honestly to let a man preach my daughter's funeral, you know I got to think that he's awesome. Amen. Uh, and and that was her vision. In her vision, she saw me and a black man preaching her funeral, and I knew immediately in Paul. There was no doubt. Amen. God is good. Amen. Y'all ready? Yeah. All right, we're going to shake hands and come out. Not fight. <laughs> Brother Steve. Father, we just praise you, Lord. We thank you for being there, whatever we face. Lord, we know that you got a battle.